Hi there. This is a revision version of our recent key topic uh, webinar on investment appraisal. Well, don't forget, investment appraisal is all about the analysis of investment project data to try to work out whether to pursue the project. Do the returns justify the risks involved? Are they acceptable from a financial point of view? And there are three main tools, three main methods, measures that are used in investment appraisal. Firstly, there is the payback period. This measures how long it takes for that initial investment to be repaid in terms of the cash inflows. So it's all about cash and the time it takes to get the money back. The second best method is known as the ARR, average or accounting rate of return. This is a percentage return that looks at the overall profit, the overall return on average each year compared with the investment. And thirdly, what's known as discounted cash flow techniques or net present value. And this tries to take account of the value now of the various future cash flows arising from the project and trying to give them a monetary value to help assess whether to pursue with the, the to go ahead with the project. So those are the three main methods. You need to be aware of how to calculate all three, but also to be able to interpret the data from them and perhaps consider uh, the issues arising from the investment appraisal data for a particular business. Don't forget each method has a slightly different result. So make sure if you're calculating one and writing down the answer that you pick the right method. Payback period, as we've mentioned, is measured in time. Often it's a question of years and months or years and days. Average rate of return, ARR, is measured in percentage terms. So we need to make sure all of our answers have a percentage sign at the end. And discounted cash flow or net present value, MPV, is measured in monetary value. So usually, of course, for UK exams, in pounds. Well, let's take a look and ask you guys to have a go at doing each of the three calculations. And we're going to use the same data for each of the three. So I'll present the data and I'll ask you to calculate each. Pause the video, do your calculation, and then we'll see how you get on. We're going to use a fairly simple and typical example of investment appraisal data that's typically given in A-level business exams. Here is a project that has a three-year duration with an initial cash outflow or investment of half a million pounds and then cash inflows in year one, two and three. And we've provided you with discount factors in the table based around a 5% discount rate. But first of all, pause the video and have a go at calculating the payback period. Hopefully you've had a go at doing payback period. So let's see how your answer compared with our answer. And we think the answer is two years and three months. Let's just go through the workings on this. Don't forget with payback, it's about how long it takes for that initial investment of £500,000 to be repaid. We ignore cash flows that happen once payback has, uh, has been completed. Well, in year one, we started £500,000 down and we got £100,000 back. 100,000 net cash flow. That leaves 400,000 still to pay back. In year two, things got better. We started still wanting another 400,000 back, but year two generated cash inflows of 300,000, which meant that we were left with 100,000 left to pay back. And we know that in year three, 400,000 came in, <clears throat> but we only needed 100,000 to reach payback. Payback is when the net cash flows equal the initial investment. We only needed 100,000 of that 400,000 in year three. And to work out the proportion of time of year three, we simply divide 100,000 by 400,000 and times by 12, in this case, to get to the number of months uh, in, uh, in addition to the first two years that have passed. So the payback was two years and three months. OK, right. There's the same data again. This time, please pause the video and calculate the ARR. Let's take a look. Now, ARR is often the most complicated and often the most challenging calculation. Students, uh, quite a lot of students, make an error. And there's a reason for this, which we'll go through here. We well, think the answer is 20%. Did you get 20%? Hopefully you did. Let's have a look at the calculations here. Well, the first thing with ARR is to firstly work out what are the total returns of the investment. And then uh, to, to get an average, an annual average, we have to divide by the number of years of the project. Let's start by working out the total returns. Well, what we do is we add together the net cash flows, 100, 300 and 400. 
which if we add them together, that gets us to £800,000. But don't forget, and this is the key bit with ARR, we have to deduct the cost of the investment, the half a million that went out at the start. So actually, and a lot of students forget to do this, absolutely vital you do it, it's the net cash flows added together less the cost of the investment. That gives us the total return over the three years, £300,000, £800,000, less half a million, £300,000. But don't forget, we want an average annual return. It's a three-year project, so therefore 300000 is the return over three years. Divide by three years to get £100,000 per year. Now, the percentage we do is we divide that average annual return, £100,000, by the initial investment and express it as a percentage. So £100,000 on average was the return divided by the half a million pounds, 500000 of initial investment, times by 100 that gets us to an average annual return of 20%. Okay, same data again. This time, please have a go at calculating the net present value of the project. Okay, let's take a look. Now, with net present value, we have to do something a little bit more. We have to apply the discount factor to each of the net cash flows in each year, then add up the net present values uh, to see whether it's positive or negative. And hopefully you therefore worked out that the answer is positive with a net present value of £212,900. Let's have a look how we do this. Well, what we've done is we've simply added another column to the table there. We've applied the discount factor. We multiplied the discount factor by the net cash flow. Don't forget, always net cash flow. So 1 at time 0 is half a million of net present value. And our discount factor of the 100,000 coming in year one is 0.952. Therefore, in terms of uh, the present value of that 100,000 in a year's time, it's worth 95,200 uh, 95, pounds to us. Then we apply the same discount factors to the other net cash flows in year two and three. But the key with net present value is to add it all up. So it's minus 500,000 plus those three years of positive cash flows, the present value of those, if you add it all up, it comes to 212,000. 900, a positive MPV, which normally means we would accept the project. So hopefully you got three answers that were the same as those there. OK, just a little uh, thinking exercise for a minute or so. Pause the video and decide, based on those four projects, which project, if you had to choose one, would you invest in? So pause the video and have a think, and then decide why. OK, well, which did you choose? They all have a positive NPV, which would normally suggest that you would pursue those projects. They are positive NPV. They also all have a positive ARR. They're all profitable, albeit the percentage changes. And they all pay back, albeit at different amounts of time, ranging from half a year Project B to six years of Project D. And they also have different investments. So the answer is, of course, it simply depends on the situation of the business and the attitude of the business and its management to taking risks. They may take a look, for example, at Project B and decide, actually, this looks quite attractive. Uh, a £250,000 investment, but we get that cash back in half a year, six months, and it makes a nice positive MPV and a decent return of 10%. That looks like a project. You'd think, well, let's, let's crack on. Let's do it. The cash flows look strong. We get our money back very quickly. Alternatively, if money was scarce or we had to choose between these projects, it could be that you say, well, no, Project D is better. Whilst we have to invest significantly more, the overall return is much higher, 250000 of positive MPV and a very high level of annual average annual return. However, we'd have to wait six years before we got all of that £1 million back. And that's the key thing with the investment appraisal. It's not just a question of looking at the number and saying, yeah, it's a positive MPV, we should do it, or yes, it's 10% ARR, we should do it. It's about deciding whether that's the right thing for the business to do. For example compared with the situation of the business. If I told you that Project B, the business there, or in this case, the business had liquidity issues, um, but needs to invest, you might choose Project B first, because from a cash flow point of view, with a very short payback, the cash comes back quickly. However, if the business had significant cash, cash balances and was prepared 
to invest them for the long term, Project D might be better. Because whilst you have to wait six years for the investment to, to come back in terms of cash flows, the overall profits of the project are very high at 25%. And it could be, for example, that 25% is higher than the target rate of return. Let's say the target rate of return was 12.5% you probably reject project A and project B because the ARR is less than the project return, whereas project C and project D are higher than the target return of 12.25. So look out for that. When you're given some investment data, try to assess the various projects, or the, if it's just one project, try to assess it in, in the context of the situation of the business, and in particular, its objectives. Okay. Just a few words on how we might therefore evaluate investment appraisal data once we're given it. We may be asked to calculate it. Well, our first point is, as we've just said, consider the situation of the business. If liquidity is the issue, then you may be more likely to favour projects that have shorter payback and reject projects that may have a very long payback period. Remember that the methods, the three methods of investment appraisal measure different things and one of the drawbacks for example of payback period is that once payback has been achieved investment flows net cash flows beyond payback are effectively ignored by that measure mpv discounted cash flow is the only method of the three that starts to take account of the risk of the forecast in the investment appraisal it talks about and tries to address the time value of money, which means that we'd rather have cash now rather than, say, for example, three, four, five, six years ahead in the future. So don't forget with MPV, it does take account of risk. However, of course, a lot of MPV calculations can be made to look more favourable by choosing a low discount rate, which means higher discount factors. So you might bring into your evaluation the need to increase the discount rate and therefore use lower discount factors if you believe the project is particularly risky. And lastly, don't forget that investment appraisal is based on management forecasts. It's looking forward into the future. And by definition, forecasts are judgments, they're guesswork. And therefore, you may want to consider the use of sensitivity analysis. And certainly you'd want to for any significant investments before making a decision whether to proceed. In terms of exam uh, technique on investment appraisal, just a few tips to finish off with. Firstly, if you're asked to calculate an investment appraisal calculation, never just write down your answer. Always, always show your workings on your exam answer booklet to show the examiner how you got to your calculations. You would be given credit even if you ended up making a small mistake. If you went on to use that calculation later, you may get credit anyway for getting some parts of the calculation right. But the examiner can't mind read what your calculations were, so you must always show them. Next, don't forget, as we've mentioned with ARR, always deduct the cost of investment from the net cash flows before we work out that average annual return. A lot of students forget to deduct the investment and therefore their ARRs are too high and they'll lose marks. With MPV calculations, most students can apply a discount factor OK, but they sometimes pick the wrong cash flows. You may be given a table with a column for cash inflows and cash outflows, in which case you'll need to work out the net cash flow before applying the discount factor. So the net cash flow is the total for cash inflow less cash outflow for each year. Hopefully you'll be given a table with net cash flows, but just double check before you start applying those discount factors. And lastly, don't forget there are three different measure, measures of investment appraisal, appraisal and each has a slightly different format of answer. So your payback period isn't a percentage, it's not a pound sign, it's a period of time, years and months or years and weeks. Your ARR is a percentage figure and your net present value is monetary value. So make sure that your answers use the right uh, format for the answer, the right units. There we go. Let's uh, finish off with a quick question just to test uh, your understanding of investment appraisal. And we'll do a quick question here on payback. A business has a project with a payback period of 2.5 years and an initial investment of £700,000. 
If the project's net cash flow in both year one and year two was £200,000, what was the cash flow in year three? Here are your four options. So pause the video now, have a go at calculating the answer. Well, hopefully we worked out that the correct answer is C, £600,000. Let's have a look at the answer. Well, don't forget, with payback, we're trying to work out when that initial investment of 700000 was repaid. Year one, we got 200000 back, which meant that we still had 500000 to pay. Year two, another 200000 back, which meant that we were left with 300000 to pay back at the start of year three. Uh, we're told that we achieved payback halfway through year three, a payback period of two and a half years. So we had 300000 left to get in year three. Halfway through, we got it, which must mean that in year three, the net cash flow was £600,000, because half of that is 300000 at which point we had paid back the total investment of 700000 So 2.5 years meant that the net cash flow in year three must have been £600,000. Answer C. There we go. Hopefully that's been useful. A whistle-stop tour of investment appraisal. And uh, good luck with those questions in your exams.